ribadisco che il sinodo non è un Parlamento. I reiterate that the Synod is not a Parliament. Non è un'indagine. The Synod is not an inquiry into opinions. The Synod is an ecclesial moment, and the protagonist of the Synod is the Holy Spirit. If there is no Holy Spirit, there will be no Synod. The Synod of Bishops is an event of great significance within the Catholic Church, involving bishops from all over the world to discuss crucial topics concerning the faith and the life of the Church itself. The Synod is a moment where, in the past, only bishops were engaged, but now the, the Pope Francis introduced a new dimension of this experience that involves all the people of God. Obviously, uh, the Synod for Bishops is an integral, uh, important, phase of this synodal process. So all the church is being invited to reflect, to pray, and contribute to help the church to become more church. Because after all, if we are talking about synodality, we are talking about the church itself. Today, to better understand the origins of the Synod and its development over the centuries, we speak with Angela Ambrogetti, a Vatican journalist who has closely followed 18 synods during her career. One must distinguish between two origins, the modern one, let's say, and the ancient one. Synods in the Catholic Church have existed since the very early centuries. There have been synods, there have been councils, and these were all occasions when a group of bishops and priests would gather, with or without the Pope, sometimes to discuss matters concerning the local churches. Indeed, in the Acts of the Apostles, one of the first issues the church had to address was the admission of Gentile converts to the Christian faith. The early bishops of the church convened in Jerusalem to discuss this matter. After many debates, a final decision was reached, stating that Gentile converts were no longer required to be circumcised or follow various aspects of the Mosaic Law. This gathering of bishops has since been called the Council of Jerusalem and has been seen as a prototype for all bishop meetings where decisions needed to be made for the good of the church. However, the word synod has been interpreted in various ways over the centuries, and there have also been different interpretations between the Latin church and the Eastern church. This journey together has naturally been interpreted in different ways over the centuries and also differently between the Eastern Church and the Latin Church. In the Eastern Churches, there is a greater synodality in the sense that the Holy Synod is, so to speak, the supreme authority, even above the Patriarch. In the Latin Church, on the other hand, we have the Synod, as I mentioned, as an advisory element. This is important because it means that this common journey does not have a true authority other than the Pope, because the Pope, for both the Latin and Eastern Catholic Church, is the only true reference point. The Synod of Bishops has its roots in the Second Vatican Council, from 1962 to 1965. During the Council, the need for greater collaboration among bishops worldwide in guiding the Church became apparent. This led Pope Paul VI to establish the Synod of Bishops in 1965 through the motu proprio Apostolica Solicitudo. This body was created to allow bishops to periodically come together to discuss important issues for the Church and offer advice to the Pope. However, over the years, the form of the Synod has undergone various changes. One significant change that was introduced at the initiative of Benedict XVI was the addition of an hour of open debate at the end of the working day. In addition to the speeches prepared by the bishops and other synodal fathers, there were these open interventions at the end of the day. The synod takes place in sessions during which the participants openly discuss the assigned theme. It lasts for several weeks and the sessions are held daily. The objective of the Synod on Synodality is in line with the previous synods. As Cardinal Grech explains, it gathers a community of believers who come together under the guidance of the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit to spread the gospel. The discussion of hot-button issues should not be a priority. But 
all the baptized are subjects empowered by the Holy Spirit to announce the gospel today. Everybody is invited, or better still, must feel duty bound to announce Jesus to humanity today. This is the main objective also of our reflection on a synodal church. Thank you.